in pressure, uh, in a static environment. Uh, and what I mean by small changes in pressure are pressures that are less than or equal to 7 torr or 7 millimeters of mercury uh, pressure change. Uh, now I create, I built a hyperbaric chamber with an absolute barometric gauge attached to it and use it to simulate uh, low altitude model rocket flights by subjecting the altimeters to these small changes in, in pressure. Uh, now, most altimeters uh, know, uh, translate um, changes in pressure to an altitude based on a standard. And that standard that we use in this country is called the U.S. Standard Atmosphere. It was first published in 1958. There have been several other uh, uh, iterations after 1976. Uh, but uh, they, uh, the standard defines values for temperature, pressure, air density with respect to altitude uh, above the mean sea level. Uh, and most of the standard is just table, 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 table after table of data. But in the beginning, there's some description of you know what how the standard is derived. Um, and this model is the basis for the use, testing, and calibration of barometric altimeters in jet. In for my balloonists or mountain climbers or what have you. Model rocketry altimeters look no different. In fact, even in the perfect flight uh, manufacturer's information, it, it, it even says we're going to base this on the U.S. standard atmosphere. Now that's that's how they calculate. Yeah, they make the calculations. Okay. A ways back, there's the issue of uh, sport rocketry. I had an article by Chuck Pierce. And, and that's, uh, uh, I'll, I'll pick on him for the Mason Jar bulk testers. Uh, you can get these things for 10 bucks or whatever. And that's basically, you, you stick your altimeter in a jar, and you stick a syringe on it, and you use the basic um, uh, ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, and uh, Mr. Pierce derived that for us. Uh, anybody been in college and peak camera or anything like that would understand that, that um, in a closed system the number of moles N is constant. The temperature of your experiment is going to be approximately constant. Uh, and of course the ideal uh, gas constant is, uh, uh, universal gas constant is uh, constant also. So those drop out and you can relate uh, changes in pressure uh, to changes in volume, and he basically said, well, you know, uh, I'm going to withdraw a certain amount of air based on this syringe I have from this mason jar that I approximated the volume of, and uh, I'm going to assume that I'm at ambient pressure, and I'm going to calculate a pressure, and I'm going to look it up on, on uh, a table and say, well, that's how what the altitude should have been. But he discovered that the altitude wasn't quite what um, he experimentally derived. And uh, it's, it's not a bad approximation to start. And it's sort of like the basis of uh, this study, except that when you're shooting rockets in the, in the atmosphere, you, you're not measuring the starting and ending volumes of the atmosphere or your rocket and so forth. You use the U.S. standard atmosphere. Now, use of the standard barometric equation uh, based upon the ideal gas law was used to calculate the altitude. Now, the form of the equation as it's presented in the standard uh, is for uh, what the final pressure would be. I had to rearrange the terms for my own purposes, uh, where H is your altitude, and it's, uh, it's a logarithmic function based on the ratio of the uh, initial starting pressure up there, and then uh, uh, my experimental pressure, P, and then a, a number of constants. Uh, there is the uh, universal gas constant, which has been modified in the standard because the atmosphere is not an ideal gas, and uh, uh, acceleration of gravity, the more mass of the atmosphere, and of course temperature. Now uh, there's two equations in the uh, standard. One is uh, assumes uh, an isothermal 
condition in the atmosphere that if I walk a thousand feet, the temperature is different. So I don't need to uh, account for the cooling that occurs as you go up in height. Well, uh, for my experiment, static conditions, uh, uh, I chose the uh, isothermal equation. Uh, a digital bar barometric gauge was, was calibrated by a third party with an instrument that was in turn calibrated to an NISP traceable standard. Uh, the great gauge uh, read in units of tor is accurate to 0.25% full scale increments of one tor. I don't have like one of those measuring thousands of a atmosphere or thousands of a tor. They're too expensive. Um, all measurements were made within 95% of the full scale. This translates to uh, about plus or minus two tor at, at the worst that you can get on, on the uh, uh, thing. And, that, and here is my hyperbaric test chamber. This is garage science at, at your finest. All right. Uh, for my, my test chamber is based on a Kenmore uh, chest freezer. Uh, that my sister gave to me. This is uh, Edward's uh, vacuum pump. And, uh, right, my gauge is right up there. <laughs> and this long tube thing here is a pump. This is uh, not a lightsaber. Uh, this is a, uh, a, 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 a vacuum reservoir. I evacuate a, a constant volume and then expose, and then open, if you can show the next slide, see, there's a system of, uh, here's my gauge, system of valves, and so forth. Here's this plenum sitting on, on its side here, and it's hooked up with vacuum uh, tubing and uh, various other vacuum rate components. And once I use the pump to evacuate this and get a nice stable reading here, I uh, isolate the gauge from this vent the gauge to the atmosphere, expose the gauge to the interior of the test chamber where I have a pile of altimeters waiting to take off. And then I evacuate the, uh, uh, a portion of the gas from the interior of the test chamber into here um, and get a nice drop in pressure. Now, um, uh, several uh, models were selected, types of uh, altimeters, uh, all being in, uh, in the uh, July 2012 edition of the U.S. Wild Rocket Sporting Club. And the altimeters used were, were, were a perfect flight stratologger, two peanuts, uh, an old ALT 15K, and a Jolly Logic altimeter one, just the ones that I had on hand. I wanted to treat them all as a group, not a product group. Um, the effective altitude for each test was calculated based on the test chamber initial and final test pressure temp and temperature uh, using that equation that I showed you earlier that I, that I derived from the uh, U.S. standard atmosphere. And after converting the altimeter data to meters, because they report, they report in feet mostly, uh, the reported altimeter data was uh, then compared to the test chamber simulated altitude based on my calculation and uh, the absolute relative error was calculated for that. Okay. Now one, one important thing was that if I use this plan that every time I sucked all the air out of this thing and opened the valve for the test that I always get the same drop in pressure. Notice I say delta 7 tor here. Every time I use this one, I got a 7 tor drop. 7 tor drop. There's a smaller uh, plenum uh, uh, shown in that uh, diagram. That was my 3 tor one. And um, I, I always get the same drop in pressure. It wasn't. So I was able to repeat the experiment multiple times. Rather than stuffing a, a model rocket full of altimeters and launching it 
and launching it again and launching it again and again, I could rapidly create data using the system. Uh, temperature was not observed to vary during any test. Uh, and there was no significant difference in the altitudes reported by the altimeters. We had Jolly Logic or Stranglog or whatever, yeah, they all performed about the same. Uh, and it's, you know, there was a whole bunch of perfect like, products in there, so no sharper there. Um, this is my attempt. If I had to show you one slide, and only one slide of my data, this would be what I chose to do. And that was to take that absolute relative error. Okay, that's the error, uh, and I called it error, uh, between my experimental derived altitude, say a pressure change in my system was uh, corresponded to an altitude difference of 60 meters. Okay, how did the other uh, how did the altimeter data stack up on on that? Each one of these data points is a, is a test. So I have absolute relative error in percent. Okay. And versus meters here. And the, the neat thing that I observed is that in around the, the 50 to 40 meter range, note the spread of, of all the data points on this chart. They go clear up to like 30% relative error. Two minutes. Okay. And um, after that, it's down to about. 12.5%. I have limited data here. I was more interested in, in, in just exploring pressure changes corresponding to uh, 100 meters altitude. I opened her up over here. There's some indications that above 100 meters, uh, you, the uh, relative error decreases significantly. But really, this seems to be the cutoff point. And even, even there's indications here, I mean, two data points within this four data points within that region that uh, exceed the NAR, you know, uh, for lack of any other, you get a nice whole number, 10%, and, uh, you know, I, I would say that uh, uh, altimeters uh, at the data at low altitudes are somewhat suspect. Future work would be to uh, have a greater variety of altimeter brands and increase the size of the data set for statistical work and expanding the pressure and altitude regime corresponding to altitudes off the uh, uh, scale there. And uh, go ahead and entertain any questions. Thanks. First off, I, I think we need to put you in touch with our S and T because we are well. We're not, I'm not the S and T committee, but they are. Working on, on test test for, for for certifying altimeters, and so this is this is interesting stuff. Um, as part of future work, uh, any, any thoughts to modifications to the apparatus? You pretty much got. Oh got yeah, it. yeah. There 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 will be improvements to the thing. The chest freezer. It was. Uh, I did get a re reproducible drop in pressure by using this plant, for instance all the time. But right after the pressure dropped to a minimum value, and I, and I recorded it, uh, it would gradually rise because it's a chest freezer. Okay? Uh, it's reasonably airtight, you know, but not that airtight. Also, if you need it, I can log, log, you know, have, uh, somehow record the entire experiment from, from, from the static condition all the way through to um, whatever endpoint I chose. Um, I'm confused about something. You said that there was no significant difference uh, between our temperature readings. I was going to say, go uh, back to that slide, yeah. But yet, all of them are, are really, really off in the low altitudes. Were they all off exactly the same? Well, um, it, looks like it depends on who your audience is. is. You know, the average bottle rocketeer that buys these products, you know, I flew 
flew the 30 meters and you flew the 35 meters, I guess um, you win because you flew the 35 meters. And, and, and five on uh, uh, what, what, what relative error is there. Or, or even, let's, let's use a nice whole number, 30 to 40 meters, okay? That's a 30% error difference. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's my question. It's like, one statement is that they're, they're more different from each other, but they seem to be recording different data uh, at the low altitude, so that would be they are different from each other. So are they different from each other, or are they not different from each other? It depends on which region you're looking at. The difference yeah, I mean, like at 20 here, I've seen somebody, yeah. one guy sitting up there at 30, and somebody's getting sitting down here at zero. Are they different altimeters? I, maybe I'm not reading this chart right. It's got a funny pattern to it anyway. I was waiting for this uh, guy to ask me about the pattern. But I just, I just try to give them, are they different or are they not? The data seems to show that they, that they are different, but the statement was that they aren't different. So, uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they are different. Okay, there, there is a, there is a, uh, a measurable difference. Maybe I could ask that question a different way. Yeah. Are these ch when you open up your freezer and take out all the altimeters after a single trial, they all tend to be about the same? Yep. So these differences are differences between trials. Based yeah. On what you, so you would say, my, Correct. Free, my freezer got to 100 feet and these are reading 90. My freezer got to 110 feet and these are reading 105 and that's how you plot that. Uh, Yes, that's so correct. between trial between trials, yes. which would tend, to me at least, to say that the measurement system is broken, not the altimeters. The altimeters are saying, whatever you say this is, we all agree, right? And but but as you go through these different trials, you, you're you're calculating error between what they all agree is the, the altitude, and you think it is based on your pressure gauge, which might be off by ten percent all by itself. Uh, no, it, it's not off by 10%. You know. at, at that low pressure? At the, at no, it's not a low pressure. This is nearly. I'm sorry, at a high pressure. At 20, yeah. at 20 meters, that little difference is your, is your pressure gauge that accurate? Well, yeah, see, at, at 20 meters, you're talking you're talking the difference between, uh, say, an ambient pressure of 734 tours. To 732 tours, you're still you're still within almost the entire full scale of the of the gauge. Uh, okay. Now, if I was attempting to measure three tor of pressure. You're within the scale of the gauge, but is the gauge that accurate? Yes, it's accurate within 0.25% uh, at that scale. Uh, probably makes me wonder about the noise level in the observers. That was something that I was thinking about in, in, in an earlier presentation where you've got um, moderately high data rate data coming in. It would be interesting to know uh, at, uh, at a fixed pressure how much variation in recorded pressure by the altimeter you saw. Because you could be, one thought is you could be kind of wandering into the noise bed when you get down to low enough pressure. It, what, the, what the spec, do you know what the spec is on, what's supposed to be on the observers? How accurate are they supposed to be? How precise are they supposed to be? Uh, well, okay. okay, these are products that we buy and we use and we trust the thing. Now, I do know that several, like the, the Stratologer, uh, wouldn't uh, even respond to a, uh, to a drop in pressure that exceeded. Um, say around 50 meters. Okay. I mean, it just screens that out. I wonder why. I mean, you know, possibly because if you don't have an altitude change of more than 50 meters, it doesn't see it. it, it, it doesn't. Maybe less, oh, less than 50, 50 meters. Okay. That's a safety feature. That's a safety feature. Okay. It does um, the point. You don't want it to point when the in case does. there's an accidental spike in pressure <laughs> uh, at the pad, and it's, it's it's more of a high power type uh, altimeter, but you can use it far You can get used. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the uh, electronic noise and the components itself, that sort of study is just beyond the scope of this research. It really is, and, and it's not conducive to a 15-minute talk either. Okay. Um, any
Any other questions from the audience? Are all of the uh, altimeters you're testing using the same sensor component, pressure sensor component, or did you dig that deeply into the hard drive? I, I didn't really dig that deeply. And certainly in the uh, altimeter one, the Jolly Logic product, I didn't track that thing. Yeah. That belonged to mine. I, I needed to give it back to the one key. <laughs> like it would I said, be interesting to isolate. Not, not beyond the scope. Yeah. Did, you know, that is probably areas of future research. Yeah. You know, yeah. but. As an experimentalist, yeah. rather than a uh, electronic guy, and I'm not an electronic guy. I'm just, I'm just the wrong guy for that job. Yeah. How, how much of it is the difference between different sensors and different software? Is kind of the question I'm getting at. Possibly. Yes, sir, Sean. I know this is kind of a strange pattern in your data where it goes up and down and kind of a. Oh, the beans. <coughs> you see the beans? Would like, you, do you happen to have a theory on why that is? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll tell you what the V's are. Say, like, here at 60, you get this nice little V like that. What you're looking at here is my test pressure. Of course, I, this, for, for this, this is actually um, one plenum here. Maybe this one or the, one of the other ones. But at 60 meters, exactly, you get zero relative. And then all the other tests diverge away from that plus or minus. Basically. But do you have an explanation for it based on the hardware you were using? Like, I know it exists, but why does it exist? Why did it exist? Because um, the, I would say the altimeters are, uh, they would sometimes report 58 meters. explain your V, your chart is a plus and minus scale, plus over, plus minus, and because he called it absolute, that eliminates the minus and makes it all plus from zero, and he reintroduced the plus and minus by having a meter scale, which causes the plus and minus to go horizontal. Oh, uh, well, right, in other words, you're, you're absolutely correct. The V is just the representation of plus and minus. Yeah. 